Hi, I'm your host Raz Pasha, and today we're looking at big heads and undercooked babies. Have you ever noticed that babies have large heads? Well, of course you have. The strange thing is that we find these odd creatures with big heads absolutely adorable. Is a large head an object of inherent beauty? Or are they just beautiful to us, us as humans? Whenever we as humans design a park, it consists of grassland and trees clumped together in groups through the park. Why do we find this more pleasing than a garden of weeds? These are the questions that I want you to pause momentarily and ponder. Another thing is that people like to do is to live close to the sea. Today humans are capable of living in many environments, yet our preference, noted by our concept of beauty, is that which resembles the grassland of the African savannah, an area where we evolved as humans. It makes a lot of sense evolutionarily that our concept of beauty would match an environment that is not hostile to us and where we evolved. Oddly, we do not like our modern concrete jungle where we currently live as much as parklands. Our preferences are based on our six million years of development since our ancestors branched off from the other group that evolved to become chimpanzees and bonobos. Our DNA differs by about 1% from the DNA of the chimps. However, that means that we have changed by only half a percent from our common concessor with the chimpanzees. And the chimps changed by only half a percent too. It's that half a percent that makes us human. That relates to 15 million base pairs of difference in our DNA. Part of that change is that our children are born relatively underdeveloped. A seemingly backward step in evolution. Hence the need for parents to find creatures with large heads adorable. In mammals... Most species have large litters of allotricial young, that's fast growing and underdeveloped, or small litters of cacochial young, slow growing and overdeveloped. Humans are a most noticeable exception, having small litters of allotricial young. Elephants have a much longer gestation period to that of humans, so arguably the length of time alone that the fetus is in the womb is not the limiting factor in stopping humans from having more independent offspring. Certainly, there is nothing stopping the gestation period from changing over time, or I suppose you'd say evolving, as there is a reasonable natural variation in the length of gestation. For human infants to be on a par with the development of chimpanzees, it's estimated that the human gestation period would have to be increased to 21 months. With an increased gestation period would come greater growth. This is the limiting factor. There is an upper limit on the size of the baby that can be pushed out of the birth tube. As it is, the skull plates have to slide over one another to allow the head to pass down the birth canal. Also, the relative proportional size of the head to the rest of the body has been maximised to allow maximum brain growth. So the problem is that the brain can't grow any larger than it currently is at the time of birth. Otherwise, it will not fit down the birth canal. Women have wider hips than men, so evolution has also tried this solution, but has only proved to be half the solution. There is a limit to the amount that skin and soft tissue can stretch without ripping, in becoming bipedal, there has actually been a change in the configuration of the pelvic bone that has actually reduced the size of the birth canal and also limits the size of cranium that can fit down the canal. Bipedalism is thought to have increased the benefit from larger brain capacity. The freeing up of the body, upper body and hands has led to greater tool development and our ability to manipulate objects. A large amount of human brain is dedicated to the control of the human hand, so bipedalism has led to a demand for a larger cranium. There is no evolutionary incentive to develop 
a larger brain just waiting for a use to present itself, especially since the brain is costly in terms of energy. To evolve a larger brain capacity, we've had to trade off the advantage of having independent babies. Natural selection has favoured brain capacity in humans. If a bird species was able to extract extra energy, chances are that they would put this energy to use in flight muscles. Humans, on the other hand, have put this extra energy to use in developing larger brains. What a particular species does with an extra energy intake depends on its situation and natural selection. Natural selection does not plan ahead. In our evolutionary past, mothers had to carry their infants with them wherever they went. Chimpanzee babies are able to hang on by themselves, but human babies have to be carried. Mothers still need to forage for food. When digging up yams and picking or picking berries, the babies may have needed to be laid down. To soothe the baby, the mother would have had to talk or vocalise to the baby. This is thought to have contributed to our language acquisition, so having underdeveloped offspring may have been a blessing in disguise that we can truly thank the flying spaghetti monster for. An extract from Species Normal Experience for Human Infants by Dr. Cook says, There is arguably also a genetic basis for a man to derive basic satisfaction from being a father to his children and from participating in parenting or at least in providing security for the mother of his young to do so. Nature provides pleasure and often deep satisfaction in doing things which are essential for the survival of the species. Of these, breastfeeding and nurturing the young, like mating, are fundamental. If these satisfactions are missing, the fault is much more likely to be in the environment of the mother than in her inherited biology. It is a logical corollary that nature or natural selection has, over the millions of years, favoured the survival of those infants and young who gave their mothers, primarily and related adults in the group, enough joy and satisfaction as reward to weigh, outweigh the burden and survival handicaps involved in rearing them. Otherwise, in these, those conditions they would not have done it. In a marathon over this length of time, an inherited shortcoming in this respect would sooner or later prejudice survival and so be eliminated. You may be thinking, what the hell did I just watch then? Well, we just looked at some of the truly big questions. Where does beauty come from? Beauty has evolved to benefit survival of our species. And why are we the way we are? Bipedalism has led to greater demand for the brain. Natural selection has favoured brain capacity more than having independent babies. Dependent babies may have led to the acquisition of language. And those big heads are the result of maximising brain development for the size of the birth canal. <laughs>